thank you everyone for joining us this evening. All right, um, for this incredible insights with India's top photographers. I mean, this <clears> evening itself, we have five of India's top photographers with us, and they are going to be sharing with us some of their own personal insights into what they think photography will be like post COVID itself. All right, so this session is actually managed and hosted by Shishti DJ Live. So for some of you who may be unaware, Shishti is actually one of India's largest premium uh, photography equipment distributor. And a lot of times we actually host a lot of educational events and webinars to actually bring the community closer together. And we try to find ways to actually encourage photography as a medium that more people can actually enjoy through itself. So on and off, we do engage with the community, we engage with the photographers, we try to find out um, what exactly do photographers need, all right, just to make sure that end of the day, photography can be an enjoyable pursuit for a lot of young budding enthusiasts, all the way to professional photographers who are hoping and looking to take their, their careers to the next level itself. So we hope that Shrishti itself can be a part of their journey at the same time. So my name is Leonard, all right, uh, and I manage Pro Photo itself in Shrishti DJ Live, and I'll be one of the moderators this evening itself. And along with me is uh, Vijay. Vijay is the group CEO of Shrishti DJ, DJ Live itself, and we have presence in five different countries. In India, we have seven offices in Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad and in Cochin itself. And of course, we have offices in Singapore where I'm sitting in right now, all right, as well as Thailand, Malaysia, and Sri Lanka. So before we start this session itself, um, we would like to introduce the guest that we have this evening. Hi, uh, thank you, uh, Leo. And uh, thank you everyone for joining in today. And um, uh, uh, the reason why actually I came up, uh, we came up with this know. idea of having this. Um, uh, topic uh, which is much needed for the hour. A uh, lot of people have been writing to us, asking us, calling us. In fact, a lot of photographers have called me personally to ask um, um, the current uh, strange situation of uh, this corona, which is actually, um, it's a widespread concern across the globe. And uh, I mean, large corporations to the smallest of pop shops, everybody has been affected because of this and our industry is, is n nothing special and you know and um, the industry has been affected no doubt about it um, there is going to be a lot of strain uh, there will be a lot of revenue losses i'm sure a lot of photographers uh, already having the cancelled weddings sports photography i mean even the the worst affected is the headshot and the in studio photographers who who actually have to maintain the social distancing you know so with all this in place, I think uh, I thought it's it's a good uh, thing that we can probably pull in some of our, the leaders in the in the industry itself and probably um, understand and probably listen to them, saying how probably one should look at foresee the future and and what are the things that they should change in the way of their working. So let me not take much more time and I'll start introducing our, our speakers today. Uh, the first one uh, we have. Mr. Tarun Kivao, the gentleman doesn't require any introduction, but I think uh, I have some facts which written down, which I would want to probably talk about him. Tarun Kivao is among India's leading fashion photographers and a true maverick. Instead of following Western trends and masters, craft his own rare style by drawing inspiration from his personal pleasure of memories and experiences in his own country, India. He's the first and only Indian to be honored with the Hazelblad Masters Award. His quintessential style is continually endorsed by renowned brands. The many brands, are to name a few, Dior, L'Oreal, Emirates, Nokia, Motorola, Pepsi, Nestle, Sony, Nike, and so on, you know. He has also redefined the art of celebrity portraits in India by photographing some of the country's most sought-after artists and Bollywood celebrities. Now, I have, I mean, it's my first question I really wanted to ask, um, talk about uh, Tarun's, uh, uh, my own liking of 
the Sabya Sachi shoot, which is most talked about and which won many applauds around the world. Um, I mean, the, I mean, it's, it's even today it's trending on social media. You know, the the visual style is so unmatched. Each image by 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 him carries his, his signature backdrop. Looking at the images, I mean, there's a lot of sense of heritage and pride that the, I mean we can actually sense it. You know, being Indians. Now, now I want to ask you, Tarun, how long does it really? I mean, take to plan such shoots, you know? You really create a lot of mood boards to it and how do you do this? It's not only me, it's like, uh, it's Sabya also, like Sabya uh, comes up with some ideas and then we sit together and then we kind of work out the whole uh, shoot plan and we decide about the location. But it's basically uh, bringing in Indian sensibility, which he's also a master of, like, you know, his Indian sensibilities are very, very good. So when I work with him, it becomes like really very easy for me to, uh, you know, talk in my own language because uh, because he's got the similar kind of language and similar kind of uh, sensibilities. And so when we come together, you know, uh, that becomes very interesting because, uh, you know, there is no fight. There is no uh, struggle when we are trying to say something in the similar language. So that makes it very easy. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, over to you, uh, Leo. So the next guest that we have, uh, all right, is uh, Mr. Jaidip uh, Oberoi. Jaidip has actually graduated from the Brooks Institute of Photography in California itself. And a lot of you may not know, but he has actually set up his studio in Bombay since 1992 itself. So for Jaidip itself, he specializes a lot in luxury lifestyle images. And most of the major brands that you can name off, whether it's the Ritz Carlton, Coke, Pepsi, Four Seasons or St. Regis itself, he's done jobs for all of them all right and he has a fully equipped studio that actually handles from in-house production itself to post-processing and at the same time you know even though that takes up a good amount of time for him he's, he's busy he still involves himself with uh, uh, charitable organizations such as Nanhi Kali itself and uh, interestingly one thing that Jayadi would like to say that when he's not shooting he likes to scuba dive so perhaps uh, next time we could probably get to somewhere and uh, you can teach me some of that itself as well. <laughs> uh, the next guest that we have, Mr. Santil Kumar. All right. So he's one of the leading photographers, all right, based in Bangalore itself. And he's been trained in one of India's oldest art institution, the Government College of Arts and Craft in Chennai. And as an artist itself, all right, Santil excelled in quick sketching. And then from quick sketching itself, he found photography, he adopted the camera, and he's able to create art even faster. So Santil itself has actually mentored under uh, Sudhir Sir himself for six years. All right, and then after that, he established a career of photography for more than 20 years already. So he has worked for the same thing. He has worked for all the multinational brands that you can name off. And he was also awarded Asian Photography Magazine's uh, Best Photographer of the Year and Most Influential Photography in Photography Award twice. So some of his images itself, all right, for those who may not know, all right, they have actually won several Cannes uh, Lights Award itself as well. The next guest I'd like to introduce, all right, is actually uh, Bharat Birami. So Bharat is someone that I've met quite a few times, all right, in uh, Pune itself. So he's the commercial photographer whose passion for photography education is so intense that it's such a joy to speak to him about, you know, photography education. So he's the associate di director and head of academics at Bharati BDP School of Photography, BVSP. All right. So he's put in place the syllabus, the methodology, the studio, the classroom practices. So everything that goes around in the school itself, all right, Bharat has definitely had a, had a hand in it as well. So for Bharat, he shot across several different product categories. All right, so for example, automobiles like Harley Davidson or premium luxury brands like LVMH, Roger Dubuis, the Taj Group, Tata Motors. All right, so these are just some of the companies and some of the brands that Bharat has actually shot for. So he's also a multiple award winner of Goldman Award for Food Photography. And currently, Bharat is also leading a team, all right, uh, from the government of India to digitize all manuscripts of India's cultural heritage itself. So that's a very, very important task 
that Bharat is actually undertaking at this point of time. And to take the time away from all that and join us for this evening itself is incredible honor to have him. And uh, if you would like to introduce the next, the, the last guest itself. Um, okay, um, I'm I'm probably this this man. Uh, when I started writing about him, probably I think I have to probably write pages of him because he carries loads of experience with him, many years of experience. I would, I should say, Shudhi uh, Ramchandran engages with brands to build uh, visual narratives that enriches the human experience. He believes that today and even more in the future, photography is about interdisciplinary as it has to help businesses build focused perceptions in consumer minds. Believing that the success of a creative artist lies in their ability to provide solutions, Shudhi loves it when brands come to him with challenges. As a visual strategist, he is constantly developing the art of photography and storytelling through films to help brands and the businesses connect effectively with their relevant consumers. His visual media work HD won him some of the world's prestigious awards including the New York Gold for Fashion Photography as well as the WHO, UNIDO and FAO Gold for Photojournalism. Glad to have you and uh, have all that. It's a honor to have all the uh, speakers on the on, on the lineup. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I think probably without wasting more time, I think we should probably get into the uh, session itself, which is actually the topic of photography after COVID. My first question uh, is to um, Tarun. Yes. Hi, Tarun. How do you think COVID has impacted the fashion photographers and what measures or, or advice will you be giving them for, I mean, for doing the shoots, you know? I mean, example, you know, we, in the future, we're going to talk about social distancing in the studios, you know, especially where there's a lot of human interaction. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah why wearing the mask? Anyway, so, you know, to say something right now, how it will turn out and how things will turn out for us. Uh, is too early because we, we don't know much about uh, how things are going to move from here. But there are there are there is one thing which is for sure that we should be ready for a paradigm shift. There is no doubt about that. You know, uh, and and uh, and my uh, my point of view here is that uh, uh, you know when when you get into the work, uh, whenever it starts, uh, please. Don't, don't, don't try to cover up your losses because of whatever number of months you've not worked or you, you, you've been giving salaries or whatever. If you try to get in to cover your losses, you, you're in a wrong direction, first of all. I think it's time to redefine business. It is time to redefine uh, what success is. Um, you know, don't let the people drive your business, I would say. You know, I mean, you know the, the, look at this. It took... Many senior photographers like Subir Ramachandran, Hardeep Singh, and, you know, and these people were working so hard uh, for many years to bring some uh, terms and conditions with uh, you know with the clients and advertising agencies, and uh, it worked so beautifully. For in the very beginning, it was very difficult for them, but now the younger photographers are getting all the benefit out of that. These are the people those who have actually gone through a grind, where you know. The advances were not given, uh, the, the money used to come in six months, seven months. In today's time, if my assistant will start work, he can go and submit an estimate and get 75% advance. That's possible now. It's because of few people started working like that many years back. And I think now the time has come to redefine all these things because the market is not going to be same. So I, I'm saying get ready to build a new market. You know, uh, we have enjoyed the fruits of, you know, uh, uh, a few people, those who have worked very hard uh, and we'll have to build a new market and we'll have to build a market which is long term, you know, for so that you can have a longer career. Uh, you have to create the ecosystem again to, to grow along with, you know, sport boys and light mans and, you know, uh, set makers and all that because, you know, everything is, is, is coming crashing down, you know. At this time, when the clients and, and agencies and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the sentiment is just too low. So you'll have to build up uh, and that will be the biggest challenge, I would say, that, that in terms of business. 
but in terms of if i say in terms of the evolution of artist you know that uh, it's the mo- it, that's a bigger problem i think you know when when we meet the photographers when we meet the model when we meet people when we meet humans and we have a human to human interaction there is a exchange of emotion and, and every emotion carries an energy and all that we will be missing because the evolution of photographer will stop if if that is the, you know imagine sitting in front of the laptop and trying to grow you know you you go out in life and that is how you start growing so th- this whole thing that social distancing you can't shake hands you can't hug a person is a bigger loss i would say i you know these are the things which make which makes photographer grow the uh, artist grow when when you are dealing with people when you have a long journey when you have many 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 experiences and your life is really rich with all those experiences that is what makes you an artist you know otherwise you're just a technician i mean that i would say is a bigger loss right now which i don't know how to handle thank you uh, tarun um, i think uh, leo you will take on the next few questions yes because uh, i have i've i mean uh, looking at this entire situation itself you know a lot of photographers are finding that you know how, how am i going to start working from from this point onwards so one of the questions that i have for jaydeep is um, well somewhat tied to that because how do you think a freelance photographer or an artist all right can keep himself or herself financially stable and afloat in this aftermath of this um, pandemic itself what do you think is is going to be the best way for any artists or photographers freelance photographers to to actually be able to sustain themselves financially yeah uh, some of the things that they don't really teach you in photo school is business and savings right i mean i think that should be one of the damn uh, you know most important uh, subject uh, classes really there yeah, it's like listen you know you, you make this money uh, but you need to do something with it and um, think of the rainy days about it so you know i think it's too late if you did not have a, a, a kitty if you're not prepared for this day it's too late right now to start digging a well when you're thirsty so you know uh, take it on the chin for now and maybe learn from this if you haven't done that already i would assume that when you're you know when you have a business working you do have something stacked aside for the rainy day this is absolutely um not foreseen now there used to be a time when all most photographers in bombay had at least in, in india i would say at least in bombay that was the case most photographers owned their own studio or at least rented their own studio so you had that infrastructure studio rent uh, you know equipment blah 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 i think we've gone onto a rental model so i think a lot of young photographers i don't think they're really hit by uh, the overheads or the you know the running capital i don't think they may be impacted by that that much but of course you need to make money you know you you, you need to make a living uh um, so that would be an issue i think going on further what do you do i mean you know you got to be really smart uh um, you know as in when the money comes in you got to you know, allocate those funds be a little careful uh of uh, you know maybe that fancy television or that fancy monitor that you want to buy that might have to take a back seat uh but really it's unprecedented isn't it um we can sit here and speculate as as much as we want as to how will we get back onto the horse and the saddle I strongly feel I mean Tarun had some very very valid points about uh, you know uh, you know the social distancing in fact I didn't really think of that and you know that's very true how it emotionally impacts you it's not just about the business and the money but if we if we work around that I strongly feel that there will be a lot of us that will be impacted and some of us will not be impacted by uh, covid because it is photography for a lot of people are necessary evils right they have to get it done um you know uh, maybe they'll trim the fat uh, but i don't think it will be that gloomy i think there will be a certain cut but uh, you know life goes on uh, i mean i'm sure a lot of photographers right now are getting uh, you know some of the other feelers okay they 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 give this job coming i I've, i've been getting that already and i'm like what are you talking about you know everything is locked down so i i'm hopeful i don't think it's going to be that gloomy uh, the fat will be trim but i think we're going to be okay is 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 really good to hear some very very optimistic yeah. views because um every time some other photographers that I speak to they all tell me oh this is this is bad this is not good um things are not doing well but but it's interesting um Jade that you're mentioning that you mentioned about trimming away the fat so do you think that after this entire pandemic sort of blows over um 
the remaining photographers that are still going to be active working, do you feel that these are going to be, do you feel that this pandemic has somewhat trimmed the way the uh, photographers who may not be serious as uh, taking photography right. in career? So, you, so, so that's what you're, you're trying to say. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you know, trimming the fat, as in I'm saying, even from the client's point of view, the budgets that they have, certain jobs they may not want to do, uh, they may focus more on, you know, they may they may do away with certain luxury campaigns or, you know, certain campaigns that they felt, okay, maybe we'll trim the budget or maybe we'll do this next year. But there will be a certain stock of work that need, needs to go out. I mean, you're launching a new car, a new line of clothing, a new hotel, uh, a new food, uh, you know, I believe a lot of electronics like Apple iPhone 12 has been cracked you know, a year ago. So a lot of necessary evil advertising is going to happen out there. Promotions, visual, and you know, because everything is online, everything is on Instagram, people need, you know, they need uh, material to go out there. And that is not stopping, that is not going to slow down in my opinion. Okay, okay, that's, that, that's, that's good. I, I, I like this optimism, you know, I hope that everyone, all the participants who are hearing this, you know, that you're feeling optimistic about this as well. Thank you, thank you, Jai. Um, I have a question for, for Santo itself, which is uh, fairly related to his field of work. So some of you may not be familiar with Santo. Um, Santo is actually an art photographer. So he dabbles in artistry and art and using photography as a medium uh, to express that. So the question that I have for Santo would be, um, how essential do you think art and artistry, all right, as a service, is going to be like, um, after the COVID nineteen situation blows over, I feel like yep. photography is a recording tool always. So okay. I feel like uh, uh, when you see as a recording tool, like now how you use it. So uh, when you use it, like now whatever form, actually it's like a kind of a art form. What you, what's happening now? There are many people they express uh, what's happening now. So uh, I'm saying in future, maybe uh, it's very good for everyone to know what happened in our human life. I, I feel like still the, you, you can't say that, but it's a, it, it will do well. But, but in this sense itself, you know, um, uh, like what Jaydeep has mentioned just now, you know, the, the, the brands may be trimming away the fats, you know, they, they may be focusing on certain campaigns that may be deemed uh, necessary or as a necessity itself so do you in your opinion do you feel that you know um doing campaigns in a, in a more artful manner where is where they just try to sell more of a branding across and using art as art and photography as a medium do you think that this will be seen more as a a luxury that you know, a lot of brands may not be able to pursue at this point of time, after the uh, pandemic blows over, so like I'm saying, like uh, see, it's about about expression. So I, I don't think it's uh, the art or anything because I'm saying uh, actually uh, without the piece, that's cool. Again, it's coming back to that uh, the expression of art. So that's not going to change. So I'm saying I don't think it will have any impact because you still people wanted to see more innovative stuff. So. Yeah, I think that is the biggest trend, uh, especially this time, like people who, who can so for better things will do well. Okay, so 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 in your opinion, you feel that you know, um, <clears throat> post COVID nineteen itself, having having very innovative, uh, creative, different types of campaigns itself, that's going to help photographers and brands. Be, be seen set apart from, from their competitors itself. So this is actually going to be a, a, a good um, weapon to have, so to speak. Is, is that what you're trying to say? I'm saying this two months itself, like, I mean, we had enough time to think. We had a lot of, uh, uh, like, know how to go about further. So, like I'm saying, I mean, always you, you're busy with all this, you're running towards something. So this, uh, two months, like I'm saying, uh, you've given a peace of mind. Peace of mind since, like I'm saying, you had a lot of time to fix so many things. So you don't, uh, you can actually like uh, put all your thoughts, like you know, what else we can do better all the time. Happening. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I mean, that that was that, that was quite insightful because you know, in in my mind all the time, I was thinking that you know the the 
the brands and uh, photographers themselves, they may not have the this luxury uh, post COVID nineteen itself, you know, to be able to pursue and use art <coughs> um, as art and photography itself as a as a useful medium. But <coughs> seeing where you're coming from, you know, I think that's that's a very interesting point of view that you know some of the participants might be able to walk away um, after the session is over and see how this can actually help them post COVID nineteen itself. So. Thank you, thank you very much, Santil, for, for, for the insightful answer. Um, <clears throat> I have a question for Bharat. Bharat, like I've met, like I've introduced, you know, he's the he's the um, one of the academics in, in BVSP itself. So he teaches and, and he straddles a wide range of uh, range of photography itself. So in in that in that area, in that aspect, um, Bharat, how important do you think that diversification in terms of service offered by freelance photographers, um, is how important do you think this is going to be for freelance photographers to actually diversify the types of service that they are going to offer? Uh, thanks, Leo. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, for a lot of photographers, be prepared to shoot a lot of safety first and no touch campaigns. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the campaigns that are that are that are going to be uh, you know in demand for quite a few days to come. Uh, as far as diversification is concerned, I don't think diversification is actually a point. <clears throat> I uh, quite a few of the guys here will agree with me that uh, being a master of all trades, uh, being a jack of all trades, really makes uh, not much of a uh, this thing unless. Unless you have years and years and years put into it, uh, <clears throat> I actually see uh, this particular phase. While but it is unfortunate, I see this phase as a great reset. I see this as a speed breaker where you're slowing down and uh, trying to put things in a, a more uh, a different perspective and. Try and develop a much better approach than what you had earlier. Uh, it's a phase which is going to force you to innovate. You can't be doing the same stuff and expect to be hired again and again and again and as and uh, with as much frequency as uh, uh, you think you were earlier. Uh, I shoot uh, a lot of food. Uh, in food, the challenges are going to be very different. Uh, again, like I said, uh, reset would help there because a lot of uh, food and beverage photography uh, had gone bonkers. I think it's a good reset. A lot of the photography which used to be done for restaurants and on the location and which constituted in the last uh, in the last two, three years, which had constituted a large part of the food uh, photography business the volume food photography business uh, is going to be severely hit. So photographers will have to come up with uh, more innovative ways in order to tackle this particular problem. Uh, apart from that, I think what is going to be, I'm, I'm really optimistic about the, uh, the whole thing. I think uh, Photography as such, while it may see a commercial photography as such in terms of assignments, while it may see a bit of a dip, it is going to come back because, uh, like Jaydeep said, uh, we are a necessary evil for a lot of services and a lot of brands. So, it is going to come back. Uh, the question remains, who's going to be better equipped to deal uh, with whatever is going to come? Production budgets are going to be trimmed for sure. Uh, the number of shoots are going to go down. Say, for example, a brand did uh, six shoots a year. It's going to come down to perhaps four. Uh, renegotiation in terms of contracts are going to happen. There are these challenges in terms of the commercial aspect or the business side of uh, photography uh, that's going to happen. Okay. So I think just now you mentioned that, you know, um, those that's going to be more well equipped to to meet this uh, post COVID nineteen situation itself is going to fare a little bit better. So, in in your opinion, how well equipped 
do you think photographers have to be in order to meet this uh, post COVID nineteen situation itself? Uh, see, I uh, I believe in the this thing of uh, craft, art, and pro and uh, workflow. I think any photographer who pays adequate attention to this will be able to make uh, uh, will be able to streamline their work much more better offer a much better uh, for the lack of a for the lack of a better term leo uh, offer a much better package to people see we are not just looking at uh, the top 10% of india's photographers uh, we have we have a whole lot of photographers uh, who we have to look at uh, Tarun and Jadeep and Sudhir sir, Senthil, uh, they all fall in that 2-3% of photographers uh, and for them a lot of things are different whereas for a lot of the youngsters, for a lot of people who are starting out, uh, the, rules of the, game, uh, the rules of the game are entirely different and I think uh, they should be really paying attention to very solid basics. Taking, uh, taking a lesson from this one particular break, no, not a lesson, but uh, using this break to start actually treating it like, okay, it's creative, it's artistic, all that is fine, but to actually start treating that practice like a business, uh, get the right tools, go meet people, go cold call, uh, uh, you know, get the right material, Jedi and I always have this joke of uh, people walking into offices in shorts and carrying a pen drive and saying, can I show you my portfolio? There is a laptop, there is no charger to it. It's 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 never charged. And uh, a whole lot of these things. I think, that, I think the youngsters can equip themselves about this. And the third uh, point that I want to make is that we have to go local now. Now, please, it's got nothing to do with yesterday's speech. But... <laughs> Photographers have to start thinking a bit local now. Uh, they have to look like not everybody can come to uh, Bombay or Delhi or uh, go to Bangalore. You have to look at other places. You have to start looking at a practice which will allow you to sustain in the upcoming cities of your states. And I think that makes much more sense. Uh, We've been emphasizing this uh, to quite a few students now that you need to look at uh, going big locally. It may take time. You need to. You might need to educate people, but this is the only way of expanding the business. Uh, otherwise, we are going to face the same complaints that we have been for a long time. Uh, uh, youngsters come in, they cut through business. This, that, all of that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bharat. Yeah. Um, um, uh, hi, Shudir. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's amazing uh, insights that all of you are giving. Actually, mm -hmm. now, like what Tarun said, you know, we we, have, we I mean, in the future, we are going to miss that kind of uh, emotional handshake, hugs, and all that, right? It's going to impact. Instead of that, we're going to get accustomed to. Greetings with nods and tiptoes, actually, toe taps, actually. That's what is going to happen. <laughs> You're going to do a toe tap, actually, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah. having said that, what is, what is, um, uh, in what ways do photographers need to evolve during these times of COVID? What is your take on that, uh, Shudhir? I think, um, yeah, the change has to be in the, way they look at businesses and brands now. Uh, I've been doing it for about the last two decades now, though I've been in this for quite some time. And uh, I stopped working for agencies just because I wanted to discipline myself and how I can talk to brands and how I can talk to businesses and see how to evolve it. So what I see now is that uh, I've always worked with the consumer inside the end, the last customer. I don't see it changing now because the customer has changed completely. Yeah. The business sure. has not changed. I don't know about COVID and so on, but customer completely has changed. His whole mindset and his thinking is, uh, is not as before. And, uh, you know, he has been 
hit badly, um, the ones who are going to stay in hotels or the ones who are going to eat in restaurants or the ones who are going to, you know, pledge their own uh, wares, their own crafts, they've all been uh, hit in many ways, you know, and we have, in, in my life, I've gone through all those four or five, five decades actually, and seen that whole thing happening. But I've never seen it like this. And, yeah, and I, I think uh, what we need to do is to approach it in, uh, in a, to approach it from in a much more human way. We need to understand that the end customer is going to um, go for certain brands, as someone was saying, local brands, yes. And uh, um, and we need to promote the places, even where we eat, must be places that have done something and stood for what the COVID crisis was, yeah. what we use and so on. I think those all those are going to change. And uh, if you ask me, when I ask someone who is your customer and you say they are hotels, I think it is wrong because it is not hotels, but it's the customer stays in that hotel. Absolutely. And, and that guy has changed because uh, when we start asking them and talking to them, which we don't do. But if we do that as uh, hotel photographers or as any any design space, I mean, it would be a mall, it would be any interior space, co-working spaces or anywhere, we will come to know that they are frightened. If I come and stay here, the same pillow that I'm sleeping on, has it been washed? And if the bed sheet has been done, or can I touch here, or can I not touch that, and so on. How do we remove those fears? How do we remove those apprehensions? Is the space where we could work and create certain narratives? I am only looking from the photographer's point of view. Yes, that's possible. And that needs connection with the management. It needs talking. See, all of us are entrepreneurs. All of us are born entrepreneurs. We are born entrepreneurs. We are not uh, job seekers by nature. I don't believe it. We are entrepreneurs and everybody, including the one of bakes and cooks and sells and all my wife and everyone, they are all entrepreneurs in their minds because they managed everything very well. So why can't we think that? That everything that we invest in must have a result and a revenue. And if we can bring the creative to make that happen, that's amazing. And I think that can only happen if we connect ourselves with the consumer, the person who has got hit. Yeah. How do you do that? You have to talk, you have to listen. You can't go around in your phone and jump around everywhere and expect anything to happen and say, I've done this kind of data, there's only I've done quantitative research. No, it has to be qualitative research. You ask a question, you get an answer. Based on the answer, you ask again any other question. That is the way qualitative will change. The iterative method is going to change where you are going to connect so closely, you will understand, hey man, I can't come to the sports facility. They told me there's an Olympic size pool. They told me they can give me in uh, 20 different lanes because it is Olympic size. And when I talk to the mother and I go close, but the water will it contact. Okay. Can they really swim? Now, when you start talking, you know what is really wrong. That talking does not happen. And I, the reason I said, you know, why I left and went straight, straight into direct talking to customers and building brands to visual storytelling was really to understand that customer so deeply and understand so well that we are deep designing the whole narrative. You know, we are deciding how to connect it with that richness, which comes automatically because you heard it. The script has written itself, the camera is shooting itself. Now, how do we tell the youngsters? Because they can do it. They are amazing, these guys today. Okay. I worked with the 15 year olds, 18 year olds, 20 year olds, and they are amazing. They, they, you know, they take my pants off, man. And I don't see that happening because that encouragement is not there. You know? Well, I mean, like you rightly said, right? Uh, uh, these youngsters are not, look, not able to look beyond what actually, you are an imaged creator. I think probably you can look beyond what you can actually create. Yeah, right? I mean, I mean you're um, people the entire... talk, see this photography about seeing, and then you're, it's all about looking. It is seeing beyond the seeing. How do you see beyond the sea? 
this girl has a problem, she told you something, but are you hearing what she is not telling you? That is what you need to see. That can only happen if you listen to your child. And or you listen to someone with that compassion that this is my child or this is my you know, colleague, my you know, someone whom I really love. And I really want to hear, and how can I solve the problem? So I'm I'm saying it's not just a revival. I feel it's a restructuring of ourselves. Anybody, any level can can make changes. I don't believe that photographers, you know, uh, of I believe in any category. If they are trained well, if they can think well, changes can happen. I, I don't I don't see that issue happening. Very well said. Yeah. So now I come to just one more part, which is I feel the problem is photographers themselves also. We need to understand that first of all, we have to believe we can solve anything. All right. So we come to this place. We are we are coming to solve issues. We are not just a cog in the wheel where we are told, "Hey, come shoot." If you behave like a vendor, you will be treated like a vendor, man. That respect and loyalty come when we believe in first of all ourselves. And how do you do that? Still. We need to be still. That stillness does not happen. We are so busy with everything. This old-fashioned stillness has to come back. The way you look at an 8 by 10 and you spend time and you, you process a transparency on location, you process it. And then you pull out and see that sheet and so on. I'm only talking, I'm not against digital. I love it. I'm only talking about bringing that old-fashioned thinking. Like Tim Brown said about design thinking. I'm talking about bringing that kind of thinking. Uh, like Melis uh, Senova, she talks about the entire thing of you know inhalation, exhalation in design, yeah. and how from data you take create insights, and from insights you create materialization. How does a photographer do it? Be still, man. Be still, so that the ideas can come. Lower your alpha brain waves, so the right brain kicks in, and then you start getting ideas. Whether you're on the boardroom table or whether you're shooting, anywhere it can happen. It happens all the time. So never fail. That level cannot fail. <laughs> now, so that's the point. And I have taught it to youngsters who join me, 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds from colleges. I spent three days session. Some of them one year, and I've been. So what you need is this group work system. You blast them, pay them, get them into it because they are ready to dedicate themselves. It's their life. See. So, so I, I, I'm sorry, I'm coming from a different, uh, different kind of thinking, but I feel yes, that is possible. And the See. new challenges which are going to come is based on the new consumer, not the brand, and how we talk to the new consumer and actually understand. You don't engage with the girl. You got to fall for her first from somewhere else. You got to flirt with her, I say, and you got to talk to her, and then you get deep into it, and then the engagement might happen. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing with anything. And so it becomes so exciting. There's no boring shot. I can shoot 10 rooms and not be bored. Because every room is exciting. I'll say, listen, let's do this 10 rooms with all different lighting. Saying the same positioning, the same value proposition, the same emotional response. Let's do it. And then we have tabulated sheets. Maybe going through each one of them say, tick, tick, tick. Did we do that? Test and learn, test and learn, test and learn. When you take on a new brand, we say, come on, let's fail. Like the enterprise guys, Entrepreneurs doing uh, Silicon Valley, fail early, fail fast, fail early, fail fast, prototype, ready, I think this will work. That is the script, that is the storyboard. Why it don't yeah. work? Test it with uh, customers, test it with so-and-so. I don't mind doing that. I sit with the analytics or with the tech team so that I know what they are saying, look at the insights and the read all of that. But we got stuck up in an old world that we are only photographers. No, photographers are also an entrepreneur. He is also a brand guy. He is playing around what? What you think of me is a perception of me. Tomorrow it will change. That's what photography is. I change the perceptions of value. Once we understand perception of value, we are continuously changing the perception. How to make youngsters understand that? In one year they can overtake me. That good they are. I have total respect for them. So why would they fail? Because they are taught, hey, the next big equipment is coming or next big so-and-so is coming. Bullshit. That's not the way someone can grow. You grow mind and you grow heart. Mind and heart. That's all you need. I didn't want to get into all this, but this is one subject which I can't understand because it's a great disservice to youngsters. I mean, this is, I mean, lovely insight. Because when I talk, this is the problem. 
No, 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 not at all. It's good to hear. I mean, uh, Shudir, you have an experience over five decades, right? It's 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 lovely to hear you always talk. You know, so so I think uh, we will we will again move to uh, we will move to Tarun. We will move to Tarun and then we'll come back again. We have we have few more questions for you actually. So, uh, Tarun, sure, hi Tarun. Sure. Now, now um, we all see that we all know that Mumbai is the, is the photo industry's hub. Now it's a fashion capital, you know. Now, now how do you how do you according to you, do you think COVID has impacted this industry in 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 the, the fashion capital and also some of the metropolitan cities in India? How do you how do you look at it in in, in the future? Are there any uh, work that's going to come out of these um, this this all this? fashion uh, companies bollywood all these what is your take on it oh. so i saying i i I'm, I'm less worried about uh, how the work will come or when the work will come okay right? when it all starts how are we going to act you know uh, and work is not going to stop the work will come uh, sooner or later the work will start okay yeah. once it starts how will you handle it? that is that is more uh, more challenging yet. you know we'll have to start looking as, as i said earlier we have to redefine uh, what success is first of all you know because you know the, unfortunately uh, the market was evolving in such a way that you know uh, everybody wanted to get successful like like yesterday you know <laughs> before starting they want to be successful. so i'm saying how will you redefine your success? That's number one. Uh, and how will you grow? And how will you make a market which is, if, if you're a commercial photographer, uh, how will you help evolve your own market? As, as Sudhir is saying, uh, you know, that you have to yes. get a little more. It's not about the work. Will, see, if we get into this thing that work will come, my losses were this much, let me just cover this up. That, that means you're not thinking long term. That means you're not thinking that it's one next. 15 years I want to do photography and uh, express myself through my language. That, then you're just into number game. So I just don't know whether I'm interested in so much in number game right now. I'm more concerned about whether I'll get opportunity to still speak in my language, still speak in my with my sensibility. Can I tell this story again the way I was telling? So that is going to change a little bit. I and mean, you know, if if you really want to understand how will the market change and all that, I am uh, you know, there are already three jobs which we are two three jobs we are talking about in which uh, the the conversation has reached to that level. Uh, it's a it's a film we are working on, and the conversation has reached to that level that we have we are telling them that uh, to the to the agency that. See, the, the way things are moving, they, they are saying that maybe there will be a chance that there will be a possibility that there will be 40, 15 people on the set. You can't increase more than that. Okay? So if that happens, and if you're doing a film, uh, it's impossible to work like that. So the, the way is that, you're, or even if you're doing a still campaign, it will be difficult. So what are you going to do? I and mean, you probably do a pre-lighting one day earlier, where all the boys are coming and everything is done. And once the pre-lighting is done, the the lighting crew will go, and you are with your assistant and one of the main main uh, lighting guy. So you'll have to fine-tune your ways of uh, making sure that that the that the crew is very tight. You know, you uh, you know earlier they were like, oh no 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 no, still shoot. Also, there are 35, 40, 50 people roaming around for in various depart from various departments. Yes. Uh, you have to cut down all that. All that has to be cut down. You know, so, uh, but as I said earlier, that my concern is not about how fast can we move on and what will we do. My concern is how will this market evolve? Because, you know, from 1990s onwards, towards 90s, I started and I saw Sudhir Ram, Ramachandran, uh, Hardev Singh, Siddharth Mishra, Dinesh Khanna, um, yeah. Ian Pereira. These people were working very hard, and there are many more, uh, you know, because uh, because these people were working very hard to make some industry norms and all that. Now all yeah. that is cracked, you know. Yeah. So, so how do we build rebuild that industry? We'll have to rebuild that. 
वी कैन नॉट बी लाइक इनटू दिस थिंग कि आज मेरे को जॉब मिल गया आई एम डूइंग दिस जॉब फॉर माय सेल्फ एंड आई विल मेक दिस मनी एंड यू टू रीबिल्ड द इंडस्ट्री सी इफ यू लुक एट दिस देयर आर देयर आर डिफरेंट मिनिस्ट्रीज फॉर डिफरेंट लाइक देयर इज अ कोल कोल एंड माइनिंग इंडस्ट्री यू नो सो देयर इज अ मिनिस्ट्री फॉर दैट देयर इज अ शिपिंग इंडस्ट्री सो देयर इज अ मिनिस्ट्री फॉर दैट आर फोटोग्राफी फोटोग्राफर वी डोंट कम अंडर एनी एनी काइंड ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री सो नो वन टू हेल्प अस नो नो मैन you know uh, when we don't get help from uh, from any kind of uh, department from government you have to right. build up your own market we've been doing it for years yeah. why is that we you know we say that you know every photographer should follow certain kind of terms and conditions so that you know the market is healthy for everyone yeah it could be a change of rate and all that but it has to be healthy for everyone and unfortunately that will take a hit but or all of us like the senior most and, and you know somebody like sudhir ramachandran i think like some uh, you know second generation we started and then there are younger generation you know they all have to together rebuild this market so my concern is not like uh, whether in two months or three months i'll start making money or not my concern is whether the market will be big enough and matured enough and evolved enough that and how will, what role will be play in that that it will last for for a longer time like the way it was going on right now you know a young photographer can start tomorrow uh, uh, like you know earlier before the lockdown bc the, you know before before <laughs> corona before corona <laughs> before corona you know you could have picked up the camera go to a agency and they will like your work and you know even if you're a, uh, you know even you you're a instagram photographer you've never shot any campaign or There, there, there was a good chance that you can get a job. You give a estimate, you'll get the advances and all that. You know, all this was done for many years, and that's the reason there was a system in place. Yeah, we have to look into making that system in place instead of looking into individually whether I can make a couple of lakhs in in next month or not. I, I'm I'm saying, look at the bigger picture. Go a little more deeper, like Sudhir is saying. Yeah. into the minds of of thing and and you know just try to understand how to look at the bigger picture absolutely absolutely well said yeah. in fact in fact um, while 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 you're talking um, uh, tarun you know i only uh, remember this uh, statement that uh, warren buffet in 1980s he used to when he bought the first gillette share everybody was shocked why is warren buffet buying gillette you know and he says when i wake up early in the morning next day i know millions of men around the world need to shave and i'm doing good with my gillette you know same way i think image taking and image creation it will never die it will grow there's so many everything you see across the globe you need image there is an image you you relate with image uh, making right so i think it's it's, it's a great uh, opportunity left in there and and uh, like you said this the opportunity is immense just that uh, see and it looks all very gloomy and then we'll move on from this we moved on from many 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 things earlier also you know as humanity uh, we'll move on from this also we have to just learn how to how to find you ourselves and uh, you know start looking into um, a new way of living actually absolutely very well said yeah thank you uh, tarun uh, leo i think uh, In fact, I I think um based on what Tarun said, you know, trying to rebuild the market, rebuild the industry again, I think that is um that that is definitely something that is extremely important in order for the photography community to to grow as a whole. But at the same time, you know, I I have a question for for Jai Did, which is somewhat linked to that, because in the sense that you know, while while the experienced photographers like like um the guests that we have here today are working hard you know to rebuild the community to 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 rebuild the market itself at the same time there will always be a group of very young um up and coming photographers all right and for them photography may be their livelihood so so jai did do you think that photographers like this do you think they're going to have a much harder time um to charge livable rates to their clients itself are you are you suggesting that uh, 
the new photographers who are starting post-COVID. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm a little confused about your yeah, question. No, no problem. So, so I was I was sharing with everyone that you know, um, while experienced photographers like yourself, um, Tarun, um, Sudhir, uh, Bharat, and Santil itself, you know, you're you're going to be busy rebuilding the community, rebuilding the market itself, establish new market trends. All right, for for the community to follow, but at the same time, the the current photographers or even the up and coming uh, new photographers that's going to take on photography as a career, all right. Do you think that these photographers are going to have a harder time to charge livable rates for the type of job that they will do? Well, I think livable rates is uh, quite subjective. I mean, it's look. Here's the thing: when you're a beginner, of, you know, when you're a beginner in any business, you're going to have a certain amount of struggle. That's just the way it is going to be. It is, everybody's gone through this struggle. Yeah. Um, and um, now with this COVID stuff coming up, of course, it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a stiffer challenge. So I think instead of doing nothing, they should sit and on their skills a little better, maybe fine-tune their portfolio, maybe understand the business a little better and prepare themselves much better for what's ahead. It is tough time for everyone. So why should it be any different for you know the younger uh, generation of the younger kids or photographers who go in, to go in. So they have to be patient. The, the, the issue is a lot of young photographers don't have that patience. Um, they, I, I, I keep discussing this with everybody in any profession. You know, you do three years of that particular profession to study, then maybe one or two years to intern it, whether you're an architect or a, or a doctor. Doctors require even more time. So why is it that photographers feel that they can just pick up a camera just because they've got a few likes on Instagram or Facebook, they feel they're yeah. photographers. So they really need to pay their dues and they need to blossom. And I'm sure once they have their skills, a good talent, you know, will find its level. Uh, but they need to hone their skills. They need to create a good portfolio. I think they will, you know, they will surface and do quite well. Mm-hmm. But yes, they have to be a little realistic and they have to understand that there is a bit of a uh, slight uh, introspection to do before you go out there and hustle for work. But but Jadi, on on that note itself, um, that let's 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 say there's going there's this young up and coming photographer, um, uh, she's crazy talented, you know her portfolio is amazing, and and she follows the new community guidelines that experienced photographers like yourself has laid out, and then the but the but the client that she has, all right, is is going to say oh um, uh, the the pandemic has just blown over we don't have. We don't have a, a budget of six legs. We can only we only have a budget of two legs. You take it or you leave it. Do you think in this type of scenario itself, should photographers still accept you know a, a much lower rate than what they might have usually have charged as well? Ah, uh, uh, the age old. You know, this is something that all of us are thinking about. I mean, it's a classic case, isn't it? Going to arm yes, the yes, yes, uh, yes, you know the agency yes. and the clients to say, you know, there's uh-huh. COVID and there's a problem. Mm-hmm. I actually, you know, I, I I've already had this conversation with the client, and they said, you know, there's COVID, and uh, you know, we, our budgets are trimmed. I'm like, let me explain something to you. You are not the only one who's sick on COVID. The entire planet is. I am <laughs> one. We are all level playing field. We're equally hit. We're equally screwed. So. Please don't say that, you know, you know, do us a favor, do us a charity. No, you are a multinational. It will make no difference to them. Think about this. All these people, let's uh, let's take for a lack of word of uh, hotels, for example, who've been, say, for a particular hotel or a multinational is whining and moaning about your budgets. Uh, they've gone with no business for three, you know, three months. You know, how many millions of dollars have they lost? Have they shut? They haven't shut down. So then why are you, you know, cribbing about, you know, a few thousands or a few lakhs on my budget? Of course, they're going to come down hard on you. And it's, but then again, clients and agencies, client servicing, they've always been, you know, very shrewd at, at negotiating and bargaining with you. So this is giving them just another foothold, just another stick to hit you with or to negotiate with you. You have to be smart enough to look through it and take a call. It's, I think you should just treat it like any other negotiation, like any other um, you know, uh, uh, whining and moaning and negotiating tactics that they do. Huh. If you feel very strongly about a brand and it's an old client of yours, you've known that client really well, then that's up to your discretion. But, you know, it's nothing new. Uh, it's in every business, isn't it? They, they're all going to try and uh, uh, try and negotiate hardball, uh, play hardball with you. But, you know, the businessman out of you has to come out and say, okay, you know, if I have to do this shoot, I really believe that I need 
so and so stylist or so and so model and she's going to charge x y z and i need this location and if free lighting day and i need this and that is the thing when you start compromising on this and you start cutting corners it is going to backfire on you right your end result is going to be compromised without a doubt so exactly. do you so you know to me keep your client happy you're going to compromise on certain costs on certain you know the fact that you need to cook and it's not a taste that good at the end of the day you still need that butter and that fat to make something tasty so i compromise that now that was uh, that, that, that was incredible answer actually i mean i'm, I'm just seeing some of the replies from uh, the participants itself all right and uh, i i believe a lot of people are, are extremely happy to to actually hear this type of reply that you know the brands are not the only one who's facing covid-19 but everyone is you know everyone in this uh, webinar itself right now all of us are facing our own difficulties as well and i i think it's it's extremely right for you to say that um yeah some of these uh, multinational companies itself their their kitty is actually deep enough that you know they can uh, actually work on the usual budget if not just a little bit lesser probably than their than their usual one with very good reasons i would say yeah so um thank you so much for 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 the insightful um, answer itself um i have a question for for sentil so <laughs> it is it is related to to art photography itself you know something that that um you are known for do you think that art photography is going to be redefined you know after covid-19 itself do you think how how do you think covid-19 itself is affecting art photography and uh, if there's going to be any changes how do you think it's going to be like i don't think it will make any changes because i think no the humans always there is up and down throughout their uh, life so i don't think this will make any changes that's why I, because I, there is no because i'm saying we are all talking about so many things but i'm saying uh, as money or anything like we were all facing this for past 5 years right yes so, so i don't think that this covid is going to change anything okay so but, but do you think the way people okay so so if, if that's the case um you know just now we spoke about how brands how clients um how the the on the business front itself art photography is going to be to be viewed but mm-hmm. on the audience Roy, front you know on the that. consumers front like Roy. for example myself uh my wife you know my my friends and all that do you think that you know the way we are going to view art photography is going to be different do you think it's just going to be like a luxury pursuit of sorts than something that is uh, uh like, like a utilitarian type of tool oh uh, maybe like now this is the time to sell uh, whatever you your work maybe the price might have been uh, lesser now mm-hmm. so maybe you have to go with it because i'm saying later it might it might change maybe people will uh, who has money might buy your work because always when the prices are less people might buy and store it yes so that is one way of looking at it because now maybe uh, the prices are negotiated maybe you can go with it hmm. okay so but but do you think um, you know <clears throat> I mean I mean right now we are we are talking about buying essentials buying uh, only the things that you need you know we are still trying to keep our kitty itself you know sufficient hopefully enough to tide through uh, the next few months that you know whatever lockdown that they might be so do you view art photography as essential or at this point of time do you feel that or, or even after post covid-19 itself Do you feel that art photography itself may be a little bit of a of a luxury? Oh, uh, but who's buying it? Hmm. You have to see it. Okay. So, so it depends on who the end customer, who 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 you are, you as a as an art photographer, who you are going to be targeting as your customer itself. Is that what you're trying to say? The people who are buying, see, they are the ones that they get it, but still, they may be having money. So you should lose your hope on that. That's what okay. I mean. Only that maybe a bit of a negotiation might be there, but not as like I'm saying. You can't say luxury because the people who who's having a collection and see 
but then it's a collective either. So, so <clears throat> in that way, like I'm saying, you're not targeting people uh, who, who is like uh, affected on this. They are not going to buy. It. So, so you feel that your your collectors are, are not going are, are not as badly affected by uh, COVID nineteen itself right now. Yes. Okay. Okay. There's 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 there's, there's an interesting insight into a slightly different world of uh, photography itself. Because uh, I know at the start, you know, we've heard, we've heard from fashion photographers, we heard from uh, commercial photographers, and now hearing from art photographer itself, you know, we, we I start to realize, you know, the, the diversification, all right, of the of the field itself, and how photography itself, you know, there, there's there's a lot of hope, you know, I'm I'm feeling extremely happy right now, you know, to hear all this extremely optimistic view from from everyone. Abhinash wants to say a few words and he wants to pay for it. Abhinash? Hi. Yes. Can you see me? Hi. Yes. You can hear me, right? Yes, yes, very well. Please go ahead. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tarun, Jaydeep, Bharat, everyone. Uh, hi. Hi, Abhinash. Okay, I want to say something a uh, little. Uh, I've been listening to everyone and uh, it is it is a very weird time. But I think this, uh, I agree a lot with what Tarun was saying actually, because um, that's how I look at it. When it starts is more important than what the work will be. It's just a question of starting, things are going to be okay. I just want to say something really uh, hard hitting. Please take it in the right way. If we are all photographers here, I want to give you all a very big insight into how I think. Basically, in every crisis, there is a great opportunity. So just look at it that way. And kill it. It's easy to, you know, we should look at this as an opportunity. This crisis, we will use it. There are so many people who are using it. It may be a mask maker or a sanitizer. There are producers, there are clients now who are going to come and negotiate for no reason at all. Using the word COVID. So we also, all we have to do is not lose our bearing, be cutthroat, look at that opportunity and just rake it in, is what I personally feel. Sounds harsh? Not at all. No, I think it's a fair, yeah. it's a very fair point. That's it. And I mean, what else can you do? It's, it's a very weird time. All that is important right now, I personally feel that nobody knows how bad it is. Nobody knows how bad the loss is, how bad the hit is. It's like a big accident. We heard a big crash. We don't know how many are dead. We don't know if only the car has gone and the airbags have saved everybody. I'm looking at it like this. We really don't know. It's just a big crash that has happened. We just have to see how big it is and bad it is. I have a feeling it's not as bad as everyone is thinking. Thank, thank you, Avinash. Thank you for thank that. You. Thank, you. No, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. For yeah. See you also. See you also. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that was a great bonus for everyone to have a uh, one more opinion from one of uh, India's uh, greatest photographer itself as well. So um, uh, back to my question for Bharat itself, actually, um, uh, <clears throat> this is actually to do with the type of photography that you uh, you've won awards for, which is uh, food and beverage photography itself. Um, in what ways, you know, photographers who shoot food and beverage. And uh, how can they actually take this time, uh, this lockdown time itself, to actually build on their portfolio? What do you think is, is some? What, what do you think are some ways that uh, photographers can actually take this time to build? It's essentially what uh, uh, photographers shooting everything else uh, have to do. I would say you should shoot something that you really really like. You have all the time in the world now. Uh, you like to shoot food. Get to know food. There's so much to know about food. Uh, there's so much to explore about food. Uh, just, just get to know the the, uh, the subject of your interest a lot better than uh, uh, what uh, you did earlier. Uh, there's so much material uh, available. It's there online. It's there in the form of books that you can get on Kindle. There's just so much. There is so much that you can do in your own kitchen. Just, just look at. Yeah, that's the problem. How that, Look at how that garlic is kept. Look at how that onion is kept. There's just so much to see. I think you can't, you can't really do much. You have your kit. You should go on. 
I, I wouldn't really push anybody uh, uh, to say that, okay, fine, you have these 60 days now, come on, come on, upgrade your skills. Uh, you can do it in a much more, if it happens in an organic way, uh, if you really put your heart into it, then it's fine. Uh, it's not going to happen in a, a prescribed, regimented kind of a way. So, yeah, pretty much uh, what other photographers uh, uh, would do in this time. Do you, do you think that, you know, this is actually a, a, a good time to push photographers to actually uh -huh. work with what they have at home? Really good. In the sense that, you know, for example, if, if, I'm, a, if I'm a food photographer and I, I could perhaps set myself a challenge of documenting and shooting every single meal I have every day with tools that I have at home itself, you know, whether is it a, a mobile light from my, from my mobile phone itself, uh, I, I try to create my own, I, I don't have a tripod right now, maybe it's in the studio, I'll try to build one or, or, or read one out of something just to push the, the creative mind to, to solve problems that, you know, after, after, after the COVID-19 situation is over, these solutions and experience, do you think this can be carried forward into, uh, you know, onto a commercial set itself? Um. Uh, there's really no easy answer to this. I guess it uh, depends from photographer to photographer, from person to person. Uh, but yeah, shoot away as much as possible if you want to. Uh, uh, but but like I said, there's there's really no prescription for this. Uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, my students in school are concerned right now, I would uh, I would really think that uh, they should make the most. Uh, they should use this time and. Uh, push themselves uh, a bit, but for photographers who are practicing, I can't really, I can't really say uh, what they can do. I mean, everybody comes from a different space. So for practicing photographers, I don't really uh, have uh, much of an answer to this. Well, for for practicing photographers, you don't have an answer to this. But what about? Um, up and coming photographers who, who may be looking to take on photography as a career? Uh, like I said, uh, get to know your subject really, really well. Uh, uh, I have I have, a, I have this small grouse against, uh, uh, well, uh, kudos to them for uh, developing the guts to get into a field which has been, uh, you know, quite the challenge for quite a few years. I know what my parents told me when I wanted to be a photographer. So uh, kudos to them for, for getting into a field, convincing folks and getting into a field which, is, which has always been regarded as a challenge. I'm saying just get to know your subject better. Spend more time uh, uh, in getting to know your subject better. And by that, I don't mean uh, how to get the focus right, how to get the exposure right. Those are things that I'm not talking about. I am talking about a, a, a much better engagement with uh, your subject, like uh, Sudhir sir said, uh, mind and heart. Just get to know your subject better. This is this is a great time for it. Of course, you 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 may not be able to do it uh, in close proximity, but it's a great time uh, to get to know your subject better. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bharat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shudir, I think uh, we will we will uh, we'll have uh, time for one more question for you, and then we will ask. Uh, we will take in some of the questions from the viewers. Sure. Now, I want to ask you this uh, this question now that the COVID situation has uh, actually created a lot of financial pressure to a lot of these photographers and and uh, it is not the right time for any of the photographers to even invest on any gears now with the given minimal resources they have what is your advice to them saying that how can they bring out magic with their limited resources and my second i have one more question to that i will also ask you that will will professional photography will become a luxury is only among the few top notch photographers can be able to manage this or what is your what is your take and what is your advice to the youngsters of how do they look at future i don't think uh, i don't view photography as a luxury item at all i don't think it is a 
And um, like I said, uh, it's important, yes, to go deep and understand the subject, but you've got to understand what is the value of that subject that you want to give a perception of. That's all. Yes. That's, see, we, we, we guys are not equipped enough. We don't understand. When you know, I, recently, I was talking to a group and I was talking about, we are seeing what kind of art is produced. It's our job to understand art. My art, if it is interiors, I want to know how Da Vinci did. And I go to Da Vinci's home in Milan and check out how he did the Last Supper. I want to know how all the perspective lines work, how the vanishing line works. I want to all, understand all the diminishing lines and how Michelangelo copied from him. And then Raphael came and copied Michelangelo. Yeah, it's important for me. But how much do we go deep in it to understand that? We think photography is en ends with an iPhone camera. You're joking, I say. I heard a lot of that and I accept that your interactive, experiential kind of a shot, instant ones will work, yes. But the other TikToks, where are the deep thinking ones? When Tim Brown brought out this whole concept of design thinking, he went so deep. How many people read books to understand this? How do we bring out photography deep thinking? How do we design photography for something to do that? I cannot believe. COVID is a problem. I believe COVID is an opportunity. Just like everything was a problem when we landed. When I landed in India in 75 and started work, I was shooting much before that. Uh, but I was, I'm saying that it is the same thing. There was no equipment. There was only black and white. There was no color. We learned how to do color sitting on a bathroom floor. Everything the same thing. It goes back. I mean, we have gone through all that. We got to teach our youngsters that. The point is, I see our schools itself don't need to change. It's not about shutters and aperture, I say. That's over. We're not even talking photography there. But the means of empowering ourselves internally, using right brain and left brain and, and, and our passion, the compassion first, then only passion will come. Using that kind of thinking to bring, to make it happen. It's impossible that we can fail. It's impossible we can look at a bleak future. I don't see that. I think we need to change the mindsets of the youngsters, I have, two grand, I have two grandkids. One is very good in Lego, this is hardly fine. They are twins. One is good in doing drawings and paintings. The painting one takes time. The Lego one builds up fast. The Lego one I should spot. I should be a scout. I should be a baseball scout. I should spot that and say this person is ready because he has the energy in mind to become a builder or an architect or if he doesn't reach, that is my fault. So we need parents and grandparents and, and the whole community to build a child. You need a whole village. And then you look at the other one and say, don't feel bad because you're going to be a great artist. And what is art? It's feeling. You look at all the architects, only the ones who connect feeling will do it. Today is the human thing. We are ready, empowered to connect, the, to communicate feeling. So I don't see an issue at all in... Uh, Raising ourselves and our vibrational level, I mean, from 25 to despondency to a 700 of it. And like when we does not read and understand that, there are many aspects of a photographer, not shut an aperture on one camera. Come on, bullshit here. It's all about how do you connect, how do you communicate. I don't teach students in classes about split lighting and butterfly, and I teach them platon if I do black and butterfly. If I, if I do split, I talk about Annie Leibovitz. If I do the streets, I talk them about, uh, you know, what a call. I take them out and do it and say, see how what a call did it. Now you taught them to aspire with someone through a lighting technique where they are learning how to make money and they're learning how to make value, not money, value. Money will flow where there is a Saraswati Lakshmi has to come. So I'm sorry, this is my view and, and it works. I mean, why shouldn't it work? This is a pure logic. Now you bring the Raz, bring in the aesthetics. Why it can't work? Who better to know than our Indian community? So why we can't arise? Why should the COVID be a problem? Same problems we had earlier, we sorted out. We had two workshops, one on compression curve, which brought India together and photographers would think together with the buyers. Never do it alone because you will not get sponsorship. You will not teach the whole trade. You got to raise through a movement. We don't have movements. We are teaching schools, but they don't teach movements. You got to change the whole psyche of everybody. So everything is opportunity. I walk in, there's opportunity. I don't go there. Say every day, every moment should be like that. So you're living life fully. Don't chance. I don't allow anyone to be bored. Even one second is what I paste them. I make them do biotechs and cycles and I do it with them. So I'm just saying that we need to change that. 
And I think that change create another moment. New school was another moment. We, you are foreigners, you think they're great, nothing great here, we'll call them here. So we called everyone and, and it changed. 30 years ago. Why can't we do the same thing now? Because we are scared here. Yeah. This is not a bloody. Why should we worry? I mean, when we spoke at New School, I remember Ivan Nathan and all of them coming on stage. We are not hurt, so they are somebody talking like this kind of words, four letter words. Because I said balls. Yeah, because that's what you should care and say, okay, I'll do it. Opportunities will come. We got to practice. I agree completely. The practice, because the Vina is for practicing continuously. I tell my people, hold the camera and walk up and down. Hold COVID, I'll walk with the cameras up and down my, my floor. Because I can't lose touch with it. I think with it. But then deep thinking, when, you, when, when he explains that anybody can design a plate, but to design a railway bridge to go from London to New York, that's when you do design thinking. Same thing, photography thinking. Change our whole thing. The paradigm should shift should happen in our thinking. If you don't do that, it won't happen. So call those kind of guys, call entrepreneurs and say, come here, teach them how, how photographers, how can we be entrepreneurs? How can we do valuations? We don't know how to make money. So I went to Silicon Valley. I went to learn there as I went to Milan to learn art and to London and so on. I spent a lot of time there and got my funding, funding from there. I'm the first art, to, artist to get a million dollar 25 years ago. But unless we learn it, we don't know it. And everybody, you know, I mean, come on. So entrepreneurship should be part of photography as branding is because of perception of value. Absolutely. As changing movement so that everyone gets better, you be beautiful inside, love yourself, but very important to love outside others. That's compassion. Continuously. Here, people are shy to say the word love, yeah. Come on, bullshit. I mean, uh, the other speakers, with, with respect, you guys spoke very well. I'm normally like this, that's a problem. Please don't take me wrong. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Shunil, it's respect. definitely needed. I mean, uh, in fact, uh, I should say that uh, we are lucky to, I mean... No, 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 get not at all. I mean, there's, there's a lot more that we, we all can learn with your experiences, actually. It's lovely, you know, what you what you uh, are saying and we are able to, I mean, I'm, I'm able to get that, you know. I'm sure it's a great, uh, great knowledge uh, that everybody is getting here. No, it's not knowledge. I'm just now, saying that anyone can do it, that's all. Uh, yeah, just yeah. don't limit yourself, that's it. And develop you first inside. Be so strong yeah. and so powerful that you can now be cow, cow down. You should not understand what is failure. You should risk, you should jump. Because when you jump only, something will change different. You remain in the same place, do the same shit, and you keep on going template as model of lighting and this and that. You will remain there only. How can you change? Yeah. You, from beginning, change. tell them how to change lighting every time and get out. You can't do the same thing twice. Keep a data book and go through it in detail. Build the discipline. That's how ch the change will happen. And that's what I want. If there is ever a next workshop, it, I mean, I'm talking about a movement, not a workshop. I don't like workshops. Workshops, you go beg, yeah. We should never beg. We are artists. We should not. Work should come to us. And that's what I will see. We have never, New School was never done that. We flew everybody down. We had uh, Salman Khurshed and all of those guys coming down. Same thing with compression curve. How did we do it? And what bondage among us? Where is that bondage now? Everybody separate. Everybody in the whole world. Husband wife also will look at mobile and don't have time because wife is busy, busy on games and husband busy watching TV. Then how do you expect this kind of closeness? <laughs> no, I'm telling the facts. These are, this is what. Kids are also busy. Everybody is busy. <laughs> this is what has got to change. Let's bring that closeness because COVID made us realize what a bloody space we are in. So let's understand one thing. If I may ask, social business, we don't do at all. How do you empower the human? Number two, environmental business. How do you change and bring your own worth? At least one commitment by a photographer, one year, one project. And then get into connections with social business entrepreneurs and create a virtual VC fund. Now we don't know, we have like bonds. You do that job and come and you do that job. 25 jobs have done, okay, how many the so-and-so weddings is. I mean, come on, we're in a crazy rush. Stillness is not practiced. So awareness internal does not happen. 
On the second, as you're watching on a dining table, as you're sitting in a boardroom, can you cut down and get into that level and then connect with people in a different level? In the right brain, when the right brain kicks in? That's the practice. My kids, I want kids to learn. Very well said, yeah. Yeah? Very well. We got to learn. There's a great spiritual power in Indians, especially I'm saying. We are blessed with it, born with it. Like I said, we are all born to be entrepreneurs. We are born with a lot of things. We get the home. And when it pours us between one home and the next, it's the same thing as breathing. And that pause is the time when you create and, and, and do analytics and understand shit, man, this is going wrong. Let me align it to the product again. And that's how creativity happens. Yeah. The pause in the home is more important than the up and down breathing. No small, small things we need to know. I mean, we can do anything else, but there is a tough life. I mean, but it's a fabulously tough life. So we got to enjoy that fun. Wow, I'm going to have tough time. Yeah, let me live in that tough time. Uncertainty. Wow, I love it. This thing of fate has happened. Oh, I'm waiting for that also. So we prepare ourselves. We build our muscle, internal muscles. Yeah, sorry, I'm holding up everyone. Please go ahead. They, I mean, I heard some of them fabulous to listen to you guys. And you shouldn't be hearing a ranting fellow like me. Because <laughs> Shudhi, tell me, where do you, Shudhi, I have a question for you, Shudhi. Where do you get this energy from? Okay, sorry to interrupt. You are yes. seeing Sudhir in a very, very milder uh, version of him. Ask me, I have seen him 25, 30 years ago. Right? <laughs> a little before... Uh, uh, when we started the uh, compression curve and the new school. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. You mean it's a treat to watch him here all the time. Full <laughs> 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 of energy. So, so, thank you. Yeah, thank so, you, Jagrath. I uh, haven't seen this side of Sudhi, sir. So it's, it's really, really, really nice to thank look at that sort of I just want to interrupt. Sorry for you. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think uh, we let's let's take some questions from the from the audience. I have this question from this gentleman by name Naushad, and uh, this question is to Tarun. Uh, Tarun, we, we, we I mean, if you look at in the last uh, two months during the COVID, we have all this a uh, lot of people doing this fashion shoot through FaceTime and Zoom, like it's the new normal, you know now. Is this remote photography consultation a threat or an opportunity? I mean, it's uh, he has uh, notion that saves all the travel and total costs and all that. So, what is your take on it? See, after what so that, that that you know firing you all got from Sudhir. After that, also <laughs> want me to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> the question is worth answering. <laughs> Let's get a little more deeper and understand what we are dealing with. And how we will deal with it? You know, he's a man who's dealt with this for last some some three decades. I've been I met him in 1990s. Recently, last uh, some 15 days back, I had a long chat with him, and we were just talking. And he's only talking about spiritualism. He's only talking about books to read, about about life, about energy, about about every goddamn thing. When you talk to him, he will hardly talk to you about photography. <laughs> and that how you become photographer. I mean, become a human first. Become uh, I mean, learn to understand the energies of people and, and uh, first you try to understand your own energy. They try to mingle around with other people on energy level, that is when things will happen. Now, these technical questions, whether, you know, the Zoom is a threat and all that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, if you make yourself stronger, nothing is a threat, okay? Uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't know whether this question should be answered. Uh, we need to... You know, on the level what Sudhir was saying, we need to understand on that level. And if you are missing the point there, then then I can probably answer this. But, you know, I don't want to miss the point there. He's said this very, very strongly. And what he's saying, we need to get a little more deeper on that. Yeah. So you will find answers within yourself, not outside whether Zoom is a threat and this is a threat. Uh, threat is for people, those who, those who don't believe in themselves. So uh, I would rather say... Um, if you can get this recording, go through it again, two, three times, what yeah. Sudhir was saying. We, you know, we will be sending the recording actually. And I think, uh, I think, I think after what people, uh, the lot of questions people posted before Sudhir, now I post <laughs> send all the questions to Sudhir. He'll give one, <laughs> one step. 
during sudesh's uh, uh, last uh, take off i yeah. i actually got some perspective he said that he came to india in 1975 to begin photography i was born 2 years later <laughs> <laughs> now you know that, that that just that just gives me so much more perspective now <laughs> So, I mean, that's why I ask him, where does he get all his energy from, you know? So, I mean, this is... I don't know. I don't forget that he can put all of us to shame when it comes Absolutely. to... Absolutely. I agree. How to, <laughs> how to teach kids how to become photographers. You know, and he's got a team which is massive. His assistants are fantastic. Okay, look at that. So... I think you should be doing this workshop only with Sudhi. <laughs> ah, no, no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a few months back, I think before the COVID, I was, I was, I was waiting outside his office, and I go in there. On his table is a huge stack of books. I am asking Sudhi, what are you doing with all this? He said, I am wondering what. How do I go back again and start reading it again? All these books. <laughs> What I spoke to him, uh, probably 15 days back, I was talking to Sudhin and we were discussing about different books and spiritualism and energy and, you know, various things. I mean, he's so passionate about life, you know, yeah. which, which is so important. He's passionate about life. And that is what makes him an artist. And, of course, he knows how to make money. But, uh, you know, I actually have a question from the audience um, that's actually regarding education. So... With that, I would like to actually pose that question on to Bharat itself. All right. So, um, Bharat, how do you think photography education is going to change um, after COVID-19 itself? See, for the, for the time being, we are trying to do what we can do online. But uh, it's a tough ask. <clears throat> Try and do this uh, online is a tough ask. Uh, especially when it comes, uh, uh, you know, absolutely... Uh, uh, like out of the blue, you can't really. Uh, uh, we, we are trying to do the most that we can. We are delivering a lot of stuff uh, to uh, online uh, classes, but I believe somewhere we have to figure this out. Uh, and I have a very. I am of the opinion that classes are going to start uh, uh, the way that they did, and uh, well. Schools, schools have to come up. Uh, uh, schools have to come up with a lot more in terms of, uh, uh, like uh, Sudhir sir said, uh, I have this conversation with Jaydeep always uh, with Tarun. Whenever he has come to school, we have had this conversation. Uh, I hope somewhere schools succeed in. giving a lot more than just uh, camera and lighting. Uh, uh, I can speak for myself. Uh, we, we've started with the history of cinema, the history of architecture, the history of art, and a whole lot of other things. Uh, we, do, we do stuff. We are trying to do. In fact, I'm glad that uh, Sudhir and uh, Tom mentioned a lot of this. Uh, apart from really pushing for uh, a lot of the basics to get uh, solid, we are doing uh, quite a few things uh, that they spoke about. I think uh, I would like to put the ball uh, in the student's court, on the student side of the court. I need, I, I think that uh, students need to be far more aware of stuff around them than they are right now. Uh, it might be unpopular opinion, but uh, I find a lot of them uh, spending a lot of time in that five and a half uh, inch screen, six and a half inch screen. Uh, there is there is a lot of need for validation. There is, and in all that, we just we have just forgotten how to be aware of what's going on around us, what has happened uh, before this, and. We, we, I, I think I think we need to we need to push students uh, to look at far more beyond just uh, what camera are you using and uh, what 
कल्चर और शूटिंग एंड गो बियॉन्ड द होल ओके थिंग पीछे का आउट ऑफ फोकस हो गया लाइफ शॉर्टेड इट्स अ गुड पिक्चर इधर से एक लाइट डाला उधर से एक लाइट डाला गुड पिक्चर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट आई डोंट थिंक देर इज गोइंग टू बी अ चेंज इन दिस थिंग यस मिस्टर सनादन we have we do end up spending a lot of time uh, with students i think so do uh, a lot of other uh, uh, photography teachers who are uh, who are on uh, this uh, workshop uh, we end up spending a lot of time with students uh, i think this is just this is this is this has just to keep on evolving like this we've got to uh, we've got to uh, get students to explore more and more of what's around them uh get them to see things in their own way uh, besides what they readily get to see uh, on social media i have i have i am of the i am of the firm opinion that uh, if you are a photographer you should have an opinion you should be opinionated if you are not opinionated then uh, it's, a, it's a little it's a little difficult to <clears throat> express so okay. there is where it should be going and i'm i'm not uh, i i'm completely in uh, uh, i concur completely with uh, sudhir sir with tarun and with jaydeep on whatever they said uh, uh, when they responded to their questions i will not repeat that So shall we take one last question, Shudhi? I think uh, Tarun already answered that, but still, I think we will give it uh, to hear from uh, Shudhi as well. There is one uh, <laughs> Mayur Mantri. He is asking, what are practical ways to spiritually connect with yourself and put that energy into art? There is no easy answer. I mean, uh, first of all, people can't stand still. I, I was explaining the whole concept of stillness and going to a place. Or being with a guru, or being with whatever. I was fortunate, I, you know. I spent a few decades with some of them. But you know, when you look for it, it comes. The minute it comes, it can't hide. If your heart and your mind and your consciousness is open, it will come. And when you start looking at it and you start going deeper inside, this word "deeper" and all seems like major. Uh, it's is not big bullshit man i say these are not strong these are not something that is so difficult meditation is not a big deal i mean 3 hours is easy i mean if you want you sit and see but uh, can you be still can you bring no thought can you get into a dynamic where you scientifically the learn this is all possible it is logical and you know you can actually go into a certain space where it doesn't matter and there's no thought at all <clears throat> and you can get in that space it, it is very easy because once you can do that there's no barrier it is infinity because all this is infinity you wish and it will happen i have a, i had i mean a 38 year old son who passed away <clears throat> is uh, we couldn't talk to him is quadriplegic but because i could go inside i you know i could con- communicate with him and therefore i will know what is wrong with him and i can tell my wife or whoever this is the problem give him this i can i'll sit in another room even if i'm traveling but i'm connected so it all depends if you want you can connect with anything anywhere providing is for the good now that is the purity you do a shot and you don't do a shot and i finish and i hey, i'm awesome because i did it in 5 minutes bullshit i take days sometimes i don't put timeline i'm an artist that's what i tell my uh, wherever i go I moved into that hotel. I was shooting a hotel here at the Conrad. I moved in for a couple of months, though it's next door to my office, to my house. But no, I wanted my whole team dedicated because we have a responsibility, a responsibility to deliver something which will be of value, which they can sell, which they can market. Creating work that is artistic and marketable for a lifetime. is perennial marketing is perennial art is true perennial art 500 years later why are we thinking about michael angelo the guy has existed van gogh in his lifetime no but look at him today look at all the great artists what are we we just got a camera and so we stop being artists we are artists 
We express our feelings. We are not afraid. We are full of talking through our camera because that's a device with which we use. Now, th that's the only thing. But if that spirit, that spiritual feeling can come, I don't use the word spiritual religion. I'm not, I'm against all this. But if that feeling can come when you know yourself and you're so strong, so powerful, nothing can touch you and you love unexpectedness, you love taking risks, it doesn't matter, everything's okay. Now they know, hey, things are boring. Come on, I don't allow my guys to sit. I don't, there's no timeline, you know. You, you have seen it, uh, you know, Vijay. There's no timeline in the hotels I stay. Nobody sleeps. I've, Nobody I've seen, sleeps. Yeah. We don't know what to sleep. Why? Why should we know? So I, I, I work on that thing. So intuition must come. Yeah. And, and, and it must go in. But it should come after deep thinking and after a lot of logic is in place. And after the research has been done, you gather all that, create your insights from that data. So I, I go into, that's why I have a computer. And, and I mean, I have technology guys for the last 30 years. Because they can analyze it and tell me this brand work did not work. So then my restaurants are not doing not doing well. Come on, I'm coming over. So what are we? Turn around artist. That's what they call on Silicon Valley. Why should we be less with our photography? Who will not want us? Even now in COVID time, don't they want us more? I see that and I see huge opportunities. It's okay, price is less or more or whatever. It doesn't matter. It will even out. But if the brand is worth it, the cost is worth it, the human is worth it, let's do it. That's all I look at. And it doesn't bother anything more. So spirituality, let's not give it a big tagline and bring all these kind of things. It is about yourself and raising your vibration level to get everybody else also in that vibration level, not believing that there is something called, you know, limitation. Word limitation, I don't like to hear. I never allowed it in my children or anybody lifetime. I don't allow it in my group of photographers I work with or we, are, we connect with every time. I don't allow it. So anything predictable, I'm, I'm scared. If there's anything, I'm scared predictability. Get out, man. So the bird, if I hear someone saying I'm bored doing the same stuff, man, you're lost, you're dead already. So sorry for you. <laughs> That's what I say. So I'm just saying that, uh, I mean, at the same time, I'm saying all this with humility. Please don't, uh, I'm not trying to, but that's a fact. There's no ego in this because it's the truth. So get off, the, get off that high horse about all this kind of, you know, spirituality, you know. Get down, sit down and meditate quietly. Sit in a place wherever you want, temple, mosque, church. Go to a guru, ideally, and stay there for some time. Don't go because you want something from that person. Many times the Guru has called me and I said, I don't anything, I just want to be near you. And, and, and he was Bangalore, he calls me. Bangalore means golden boy or whatever it is in Canada. And then he was, I, was, I was forced to be in interviews with other guys when they had problems because I never allowed myself to go to him with the problem. I allowed myself only to open up for myself and for my family, my team and my people to see that through me at least can I be an example. So when I shoot, if I have a doubt, a shoot took over three months to one picture recently. After three months, we closed it, client signed it. I woke up at three o'clock in the night, woke up everybody in Calcutta and said, let's go back and shoot. I said, boy, I said one small thing I don't like. You know why I don't like? There's a shadow on me, on my soul. One shadow I can't allow. It must be illuminated. <laughs> and that's the point I'm trying to say. And I'm talking to you guys because you're all photographers. That's why I'm, able, I'm just relating it. Maybe in a business level, I won't be like this. But I feel once we understand that, you look, look at all this technology. Did you ever think when we are prevented from meeting, we'll be meeting, we'll be talking? So close. I heard so many of the interviews and I felt uh, Tarwans also I've seen, Dinesh. I mean, how openly they spoke, Samaj Jordan. How nice to hear them, Shantanas. Now, if we can be that close, why? We are all human beings. We are already enlightened why you want to say i want to get you're already there man that's the beauty of your soul but you're not believing it you're not there <laughs> so you won't be so let's not get into too much of the funda of you know spiritual enlightenment and all get into it yeah it will happen only when you get into it you'll be peaceful then all the energies will come and break all the thing like an energy flow i inhale all the data and get insights and i'll exhale all the uh, materialization then I'll take a pause, reflect, am I right, wrong, the, do an objective kind of thing. Again, inhale on the data, keep aligning myself till I got my picture. 
till I got the brand. Then go to analytics. Then go and study. Hey, did you really get that much of, uh, you know, uh, rooms? Did your rooms get booked? Did, and I go and sit down and check the rooms being booked. I do qualitative analysis. So I do a whole damn works. That's why I said photographers should become entrepreneurs. You should rule the roost. We yeah. need to own the cycle. We can't be part of the fucking cycle, man. We can't. We are not a spoke. We need to own the cycle. That's how it is in entrepreneurial field. So we need to make ourselves strong. Photographer, okay. But spirituality, our strength, branding, to know the perception of value and brand gaps and how can we create in the brand gap. Somebody who has an identity, we have an image, we have to change it into a new identity. There's a brand gap. In that gap, I'll bring my visual narrative and this is how I'll tell the story. I'll monitor it through my heat map. I can check out in that restaurant. Somebody is stumbling, they didn't like. This one they like, this one they didn't like. So I'll tell, throw the guy out, get a new band guy. All technology is allowing. So I've done it for Taj, I've done it for all the hotels you can imagine. I've done it for malls. Amazing. Why will I be off a job? By God's grace. Why will I be? And why can't others be? That is the <laughs> moment I am talking about. Lovely, lovely. So I don't like photographers having to beg to get sponsorships. They should get crores because they are the ones of the turning points of the industry. Without them, you can't have anything. Yeah, when uh, the Duke had to make, I mean, when the King of France had to make his himself a complete aesthetic thing, he had to rob Da Vinci from, from uh, Italy. Everything revolves around Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. How? Till today. We are like that, not less. If we believe we are less and we are ground level as we all, I've been hearing the ground level, what we'll do and all. What do you do? Your art is nothing will happen. So what, what I'm seeing now, Central doing and so on, I've been watching his work, Shibu. I mean, he, he is amazing. He is able to turn out certain things which makes the heart happy. Where will he have no work? <coughs> Where will he have no work? Right marketing. Right marketing. That is what is lacking. So we don't know how to market. We don't know how to talk about our, our own positioning. Word positioning, many people don't even know. Our first word from our mouth, not about shutter and aperture, it should be about branding. Then you'll know how to take an entity, then you'll know how to take something and understand how to take an equity value up. Here, if you don't even know what's an equity value and you know only brand equity and not the, the, the equity that can take a company up, what will you be? Why am I in different companies? Because I have equity value in all of them. Because I put my everything into it. I will tell them it didn't work. I put my soul into it and get into it. So unless you have a skin in the game, it doesn't happen. And that's what I'm saying. The whole concept of photography should change. Not only here, worldwide. So we must go and cash these buggers, Nick Knight and all these buggers, bring them in and say nothing great about you. Come on, guys. This is what we did 30 years ago. Yeah. Explain the marketplace. Explain the whole juxtaposition, the algorithm of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and believe that the soul is the greatest. Nothing to touch the soul. Whichever religion you are. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you, uh, Shudir. It's, it's uh, no, no, lovely. No, no I, I'm scared to talk. To, I don't use guys to feel ruffled. But I, I just thought I, I have to say it because that's more important. Our equipment and everything will come here automatically if you have the, if you have the wealth. If the need is there, customers will ask. You make yeah. yourself strong, automatically you'll, you, everything will happen. But we have to believe this is an amazing opportunity. I like what you said, go local and be vocal and so on. I like all that because it's the same thing in America. I'm checking out every day in America where my daughter is. Yeah. It's the same thing. If I, I don't like uh, uh, Honda because they didn't do anything for the COVID, but Toyota did and Nissan did, we'll buy from them. That's happening. Let's go to the restaurant. Entrepreneurs are talking in Silicon Valley right now because they are local and let's promote them. Let's not go to so and so. It's happening all over, but we have to be in tune. We have to be okay. in tune, man. We have to be close. We have to be connected. We have to be in empathy. We don't even know the word empathy. Then what can I say? That's why I get pissed off. I mean, you have to be that close in that tactile content. Viscerally, we have to feel all this. Then we will act. Then we'll talk. And stillness is the only thing that can make us calm. People like me needs to be calm also. So that's the only stillness that allows it. <laughs> no. No, this is this is. Uh, I'm sure it's it's such a 
lovely conversation it will go on i'm sure you know i no, think no, no, already a no. lot of people are asking me to have a private <laughs> master class of shudir no 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 <laughs> not not at all <laughs> <laughs> thank you and i think uh, i think i just want to finish off asking this one more before we close in i have dinesh sir dinesh kanna sir you have been a silent spectator there how are you hi dinesh uh, no i have nothing more to add i just want to thank sudeep from the bottom of my heart or wherever he is suggesting that one should be looking inside uh, you know it's just, it's so important for photographers irrespective of your vintage and how new you are or how you're going to be just starting out etc to understand that you're not getting into photography you're getting into life you know which is the which actually is the blessing which or you know i, I agree with uh, sudhir that i don't want to use words like blessing and spirituality and all that it's just that it's just such a huge and major you know boon given to us as people to be able to want to express and if you want to express then you want to find a medium whether it's photography whether it's writing whether it's singing or whatever find that sensitivity first the rest as we rightly say it will follow the rest is about equipment the rest is about money the rest is about you know the opportunities but find yourself find your passion find your engagement you know that is what tarun and sudhir and jerry and all have been talking about and really as more and more the photography it's sort of become more and more technological it has to become more and more about you because it's no longer about having to understand how to master the medium or you know how to work with the uh, camera or you know which lens to no it is just first understand and feel who you are what is it that you love what is it that you hate learn to hate learn to dislike things you know that's how you would start to express things thank yeah. you so much it was it was an awakening uh it's always a pleasure hearing you you don't speak enough and you must once in a while speak up and just pour it all out for us thank you so thanks yeah. thanks lovely thank you thank you dinesh thank you thank you <laughs> yeah okay so i i think um, uh, thank you um, all of you thank you um, tarun thank you um, sendil thank you bharat Jaydi and uh, Peter, uh, lovely inputs, and I'm sure um, there's a lot of takeaways. Already, people are already messaging asking for the recording of the Zoom session. We will, we will try and send it across. We will find a way. We will send that recording to everybody. I think it's a great. Um, you edit, edit, uh, edit all my bad words. <laughs> <laughs> we will try that. They came from the silent place. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Sindel, you have anything to say? You was you probably I think your, your audio was a little um, off, you know. So you were saying something. No, no, no. I'm just saying uh, how I am blessed, you know, yeah. with the people I come from. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, last time I, I was telling her like uh, we want to work in one of your projects because we always love to be with you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think uh, 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 Sindhu. There's every time I had been to Shudir's studio, there is never a day that has passed that he never stops talking about you. I mean, your work, and 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 um, I should I should probably a lot of uh, the participants. I would I would probably put up on the chat group all the Instagram IDs. Please follow. Sindhu is an amazing artist. Blog of what he does. A lot of. Uh, exhibits in 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 Japan and in fact during the covid he had one session i think it got cancelled i think uh, it will soon come up again am i right sindhu sure to do like yeah. you know so we we all are looking forward to that uh, sindhu i think thank you it's it's a great honor to all have all of you on on this board and i'm sure a lot of positives people take back and i'm i'm sure we will all uh, fight this covid together the post uh, whatever the future has in store for us we will fight it as a community together and get try and take the positives out of there lots of love and to all lots of love yeah. thank you <laughs> thank you everybody thank you.